Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Basel. Welcome to Switzerland, to Roche as a host here, to this Panagora event. Thank you again for coming along, for making yourself available. I see lots of Roche colleagues here, but this is not a Roche event. So I in particular want to welcome all the guests that we are hosting here today for this second Digital Biomarkers in uh, Clinical Trials Summit. Um, obviously, digital biomarkers are increasingly um, a topic that is uh, discussed. And digital biomarkers, meaning like leveraging sensors that are ubiquitous at the moment in the society with patients and that allow us to measure at very high precision and in a very frequent way, um, also in a mobile fashion outside of the, um, the clinics where our patients are residing. This topic brings us here together, um, focused on clinical trials, um, on developing new digital endpoints that allow us to do more successful and more rapid clinical development, ultimately benefiting our uh, main audience, which are the patients, bringing drugs faster to them that they are in need of. And with that, I'd like to welcome our panelists up. We're going to start, kick off uh, the day with, with a discussion on the state of digital biomarkers. So hopefully everyone's here. Jain, Emilio, welcome. Christian, welcome back. And Dan. We have a, a very collegiate atmosphere here amongst competitive companies, and it's really nice to see this. This topic brings us together in a very collaborative uh, spirit, so I, I love that about the summit. So over the last year, um, since we met in this, uh, this setting before, um, what have been the biggest advances and what are you most, uh, most pleased to see? You know, it's very subjective, but I'd love to hear your sort of range of different opinions. So maybe Emilio, since uh, you're yeah. next to me, you can kick off. Yeah, so um, I would say that the most intriguing part is about the way regulatory has been starting to accept the digital biomarker which has been showing a tendential trends towards implementation. They're actually happening. Now, FDA has been approving more devices. Actually, the first artificial intelligence has been uh, just a few weeks ago. And, uh, and this is a very strong push for the regulatory authority in Europe to go along. And my recent experience with interacting with them is they are absolutely excited to go in this direction. And uh, for, if we have something useful, uh, my suggestion is go and try because they are listening. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's, it's always risky doing this right before I have to give a talk on my own because <laughs> I risk contradicting myself right off the bat. But uh, you know, from a very high level view, uh, I think we've seen an incredible increase in collaboration. And the, the, the risk in this space was always that we were sort of driven by, in many cases, consumer products that entered the medical sphere and, and did so in a, in a kind of a competitive way. And that there, there, feel, there, you know, there wasn't the opportunity to really collaborate because we were using someone's proprietary system, their proprietary software, and at some level getting their proprietary result, which, which didn't play out particularly well for the first, I don't know, decade that we were doing this sort of monitoring. And so over the past year, I've seen a, a real increase in collaboration, including from incumbents who I think wouldn't have been seen as, as uh, collaborative before. Is there one thing you'd call out as the, the most promising I'll jump on this one again, maybe again talking about the community building. I think one thing we talked about last year was, you know, digital endpoints, digital biomarkers, digital medicine is a convergence of many different fields. And I think probably most people here come to digital medicine from a different field, whether that's commercial or analytics or hardware. And I think one thing that we've seen now in the last year or so is the start of, you know, sort of young academic talent uh, of real courses where they study digital medicine. You know, you know, we're seeing now master's courses in a number of university. Uh, university of Zurich, for example, is now launching a whole, um, you know, a whole uh, syllabus around this, and I, I think that's extremely exciting because now, you know, in another three or five years, all of these people are going to be entering the workplace trained as specialists in digital medicine and not coming to it from another perspective. And I think that's really, really exciting. Super. I think something that's encouraged me has been um, looking at both publications and conference proceedings for uh, some of the indications we're in, I guess, mainly neuroscience. Uh, the digital 
publications have been kind of called out as being, you know, amongst the either the most downloaded or the most popular, or perhaps have been called out of posters for a for an oral presentation. And I think the recognition of the field in terms of the overall science of disease areas, I think, has been really exciting to see. So for, for me, the, the, the last year was, if you want, so a, a triple A year. And uh, let me explain that, what I, what I mean with that. So kind of, I think in the, in the past also kind of here in, in, in my team, kind of we had, we had one indication and then the second one that came along, but kind of there was still the question actually, will patients overall accept that methodology? Will they stay kind of adherent, right? Um, and that's the first A, this, this adherence. Um, and we could now really show nicely um, that yes, this was not only Parkinson's, this was not only MS, but now kind of you can repeat this. And that may sound boring for some people, but repetition is a great thing in science, right? Don't, let's not forget that. And so kind of that we can now build this trust that actually this, this will work not only in one indication under very specific um, uh, circumstances, but this is now something that can be more generalized. Um, well, then the second thing is um, about the agreement with what you would expect from a, from, a, from a traditional assessment perspective. And kind of we said, yes, obviously, these old points, endpoints, they were maybe not yet the greatest, and we, we should further improve on them. Um, but first and foremost, obviously, to build the, the foundation, you need to show that at least what you measure now with digital tools is not completely off what you would expect with these more traditional tools. And so kind of having shown this, this agreement across uh, multiple indications, I think was also very, very important to build the trust um, and, and the foundation for this community. And then the third A is the augmentation. And this is, I think, really where everybody is so excited about, right? That's, that's the delta, the, the, the massive one where we cannot yet even assess how, how high we can, we can jump there with these new assessments, new sensors, new approaches being developed, the creativity that can now put into that, and some of you might have seen work there, um, that kind of now leverages classical sensors, kind of, but also smartphones, and then designs tests on that, um, that allow patients to do something remotely, wherever they are, um, and to, to provide and share that data from them with the scientific community to, to analyze it. And for, from my perspective, this is really, this all came together really in a, in a robust way just pretty much the last 18 months or so. So with this, essentially, we came to the end of the conference. Um, let me just really share with you and play back a couple of thoughts um, that, I, that I wrote down during the day. And so really when we kicked off this morning looking into the state of digital biomarkers today, what really kind of caught me there was the, that people said like, the change this year to years before is now really the focus on value. It's no longer about shiny glossy technology, but it's really about where can it make an impact. Um, the second session around capturing the right source data, uh, I like very much what, what Shibi was saying is, let's not only focus on the phase three trials, but really also think about what can we actually leverage from digital biomarker data for the earlier phases, in particular phase two, internal decision making, um, that's a huge advantage there already. Um, then we had Valentin kind of who nicely summarized uh, that patients are no, not, not robots. Um, and I think it came back a couple of times and it should not be ignored that, um, well, patients, patients are humans. But they are not perfect. And so we need to be prepared for all kinds of things going, going wrong there. Um, it also stood out for me that we are now really at the time where cross-indication efforts are, or kind of that, that digital biomarkers show across indications that it works, that nicely came back when we heard about the IMI um, activity, that obviously then you also do not want to have a specific digital biomarker for each and every indication, but ideally you would love to have something a bit more broader covering the field. Um, looking into the pipelining analysis, um, I think Keith was, was stating it and um, was calling us to still be humble uh, by saying digital biomarker community is still rather small, right? We still need to convince the world. Well, the world is out there. You're going to go back to your world. And definitely, I think that's a fantastic opportunity for you to be the advocates um, of this community that we are building here together. So I think that's, that's really a, a nice call to action there. 
Thank you very much.